hi guys and welcome to my channel today i want to show you how to make unstuffed cabbage rolls in russia stuffed cabbage rolls we called galupci and the different uh, spelling of this dish uh, you can check it out i have a wonderful recipe on my channel that has tons of views of traditional stuffed cabbage rolls but why am i making unstuffed ones well because they're much easier to make they require less time and they're extremely delicious let's get started for the cabbage rolls we're gonna need some ground beef and i went to my butcher and i asked them to make me a perfect mix which contains sirloin chuck short ribs and I have three and a half pounds of ground beef. For this amount of ground beef, I'm gonna use a half a head of green cabbage. Keep in mind that you could use different cabbages for this recipe. You could use green cabbage, white cabbage, Savoy cabbage, and even a Napa cabbage. And one time I even used bok choy, but I didn't have to pre-cook it. So we're gonna slice this cabbage a certain way i'm just gonna do it exactly how my mom did it so she sliced this cabbage into these long strips and then of course she's gonna cut the strips in half to make it a shorter strips but that's how i like to cut it you could cut it in cubes if you like at the end i have about four cups of sliced cabbage which i'm gonna place in the bowl and I'm gonna pour some boiling water over it. Um, we're gonna pre-cook the cabbage a little bit, um, kind of shock it, and we're just gonna place the lid on and leave it for five minutes. The reason it's done, so the cabbage softens up a little bit. And it would be easier to use for our recipe. And as you could see, it still remained its green color because if you're gonna cook it in some kind of oil, the cabbage is gonna turn yellow in the, or sometimes even brown, which is not gonna look very appetizing in your dish. Now we have to drain the cabbage and out of excess water so simply to place it in the colander and squeeze the water out or you could use the cheesecloth to squeeze the excess water out then we're gonna place this cabbage in the bowl and we're gonna let it cool completely and then we're gonna need some vegetables i have one large onion one large carrot and four cloves of garlic we're gonna peel the carrots and we're gonna grate it and i will show you the grater that i like to use because it makes the most amazing grate um, on the carrot or any kind of root vegetables it kind of makes them look like they've been julienne so if i find the the name of this grater i definitely will list it in the video then we're gonna cut one large onion into very fine mince and i can simply do it with a knife if you can do it with a knife you can run the onion through the food processor just pulse it a couple of times and you will get the same effect but if you're practicing your knife skills i would suggest you try and then you will get this perfect result for the tiny pieces of onion four cloves of garlic i'm also gonna get minced and i'm gonna use my favorite tool which is this rocking one to perfectly mince the garlic um, you could use the garlic press if you wish but i like this one because it kind of leaves the um, garlic a little bit on a coarser side and i like it this way did you know that garlic is a member of a lily family no wonder when it blooms, it has the most beautiful flowers. Just a fact. To saute our vegetables, we're gonna need two tablespoons of ghee, which is clarified butter, or you could use uh, any type of cooking oil that you like. We're gonna preheat the oil and drop our onions. Cook the onions until they're just lightly golden brown. It could take up to five minutes on a moderate heat. And then it's gonna be time for our garlic. We're gonna add our minced garlic, mix it, 
and cook it for just one minute. If you cook it for longer, your garlic is gonna taste a little bit bitter. Then we're gonna add our carrots and the key here is just to soften our carrots a little bit which will take about two minutes or three minutes depending on the heat that you use and our saute is done now we're gonna transfer it into a bowl and we're gonna cool it completely because all these ingredients are gonna go into our ground beef what else goes in a stuffed cabbage leaves and of course it's a rice so you could use either short rice short grain rice or medium grain rice because any type of long grain rice is going to be too soft for this dish so i'm using this brand it's called mahatma and it's a wonderful medium grain rice of course every rice has to be washed so we're going to add a half a cup of rice into our rice washer and wash it thoroughly with cold water until the water runs clear. You could do it in the bowl or I'm just simply gonna use this shower in my um, sink to do so. We're gonna pre-cook our rice. We're gonna need two and a half quarts of water, which we're gonna bring to a boil. Add one teaspoon of salt and then when the water starts boiling rapidly we're gonna add our washed and drained rice gonna put the timer on for seven minutes exactly and gonna leave it on a high heat so the water kind of bubbles around and we're gonna cook our rice and uh, pre-cook our rice and as you can see the of the rice uh, grains are dancing in there and that's what we want to see and the rice all of a sudden gets all plumped up and when the timer goes off we're gonna drain it and transfer it into a bowl and let it cool completely because this is also gonna be added to our ground beef now we're gonna talk about herbs what kind of herbs do you want to use in your recipe could be dry herbs could be fresh herbs i simply ran outside in my garden i picked up some parsley and i'm gonna finely chop the parsley in a traditional recipe the dill is used i just didn't have any dill but if you are a fan of dill you can add dill by all means since we have everything ready we're gonna put our galopsi mix in order we're gonna add our carrots onions and garlic mix then we're gonna add our partially cooked and cooled rice then partially cooked and cooled cabbage and of course we're gonna add some fresh herbs in my case it's parsley then we're gonna add four large eggs so keep in mind for one pound you're gonna add one egg i had three and a half pounds i went ahead and used four large eggs instead of three and that should be a perfect amount season it with two teaspoons of salt or it could be more depending on your taste then we're gonna add one teaspoon of black pepper or about 10 cranks of on your pepper mill then I'm gonna add two teaspoons of ground coriander which I think is gonna work perfectly in this particular mix you sometimes want to um, add maybe um, red pepper if you want your mix to be a little bit spicier but we're gonna mix it all together and as soon as the mix comes together and you can form um, oblong patties out of it it's ready I have this large roasting pan it has to be deep not shallow because we're going to be adding some sauce to our galopsi i'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil and then we're going to form these patties out of our galopsi mix and you can make them round and you could make them this oblong but i think this this particular um, shape is kind of more appropriate for the dish so I have 19 of them here which is a lot if you're not cooking for the whole entire army you could divide the recipe in half and make just a little bit so you could try it then we're gonna also make a sauce that's gonna go over our galopsi while they're cooking which is gonna be four cups of heavy cream and just pour it in the bowl 
then add one teaspoon of salt now we're gonna add some freshly ground black pepper which will be probably around one teaspoon or so then we're gonna add some tomato paste and I have three tablespoons of tomato paste my grandmother used to call this sauce a pink sauce because when the red mixes with white it becomes pink then we're gonna add one tablespoon of dried parsley um, because if you're gonna add the fresh one it's gonna turn kind of brownish color so I prefer to use the dry parsley for the sauce mix it all together and have here you have a pink sauce which we're gonna pour over our galopsi so it's, this sauce is gonna be completely covering our galopsi and the ones that didn't get covered just take a spoon and pour some sauce over them because that will help them to brown then we're gonna bake our galopsi at 350 degrees fahrenheit for 45 to 60 minutes mine took almost an hour to cook and at the end you're gonna have something looking like this and as you can see they all brown and the sauce is beautiful it mixed with the meat drips and it's gonna taste so delicious uh, traditionally I will not serve it with any kind of side dish because the galopsi already have the rice inside of them I will just um, serve them a la carte like this or maybe with a side salad and then just put it on the plate to drizzle some of the fresh parsley on top of it and enjoy and i'm telling you this is a very satisfying dish that you can make at home and enjoy it as much as you would enjoy the cabbage rolls thank you so much for watching this video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and i will see you soon bye